This is Chemical Processes for Micro and Nanofabrication. I'm Chris Mack, and this is Lecture 7, The Junction Diode. As you might suspect, given the topic of the last lecture, we're going to use a PN junction to form an electrical device called a diode, and we'll look at how that diode operates. So, the junction diode uh, is uh, a PN junction that is biased. Uh, biased by applying a voltage. In other words, we're going to stick it in a circuit and apply a voltage to it and see what it, what it does. The electrical symbol we use in circuit diagrams is shown in the upper right here. Um, and the biasing on this PN junction is going to determine the properties. When we apply a, a voltage uh, between the P side and the N side, it's going to change the width of that depletion region and therefore the ability of current to flow. In one direction of bias, the depletion region is going to get bigger and no current is going to flow. In the other direction of bias, the depletion region is going to get narrower, uh, smaller, and current is going to be able to flow quite easily. This is the definition of what a diode is. A diode is a device that allows current to flow in one direction, but not the other. So I apply a voltage uh, in my circuit here, uh, circuit picture here, if I apply a voltage on this side, a positive voltage on this side, current flows uh, like this, but if I apply a positive voltage over here, it's like an open switch. It doesn't flow. So it's like a switch. Turn switch is open or closed depending on the, the bias voltage that I apply. Does a PN junction behave like this? If we bias the diode, we apply a voltage from the P side to the N side. So I'm going to define my bias voltage as V. And when I put a plus bias voltage on the P side, I'll call that a forward bias. Uh, if I put a negative voltage on the P side, I'll call that a reverse bias. So the voltage V will have a sign convention that V is positive if I put a positive voltage on the P side. Um, now, if I think about this PN junction, remember right in the middle, is a depletion region. Depletion region has no mobile charge carriers. That is, it's acting like a very good insulator. Now, the bulk of the P material and the bulk of the N material, it's got lots of mobile charge carriers. Conducts current very, very well. It acts like a conductor. So when I apply a voltage, this looks like a wire, and then I have a high resistance region, and then another wire. All of the voltage that I apply across my diode, across my PN junction, will be across the depletion region. Therefore, when I apply this bias voltage, it's going to either add or subtract from the built-in voltage. And therefore, the voltage that's actually across the junction, across the depletion region, will be V0, the built-in voltage, minus the applied voltage V. What is that going to do? Well, if we go back to our equation we saw last time for the width of the depletion region, it had simply V0 in it. Now I'm going to replace V0 with the actual voltage across the depletion region. It's now V0 minus V. And then with that term, it'll tell me what the new depletion width is. Again, these are still the, the doping concentrations on the P side and the N side. This is the dielectric constant of silicon, and finally the um, charge Q. Uh, repeating that equation here, let's look at what happens when we reverse bias and compare that to a positive bias. Reverse bias means we're applying a negative voltage. So V is a negative number. If V is a negative number, then V0 minus V, minus v just got bigger. When that gets bigger, the depletion width gets bigger. When the depletion width is, is bigger, it's even harder for current to flow. Uh, you're going to get very little current that flows. Uh, if Diffusion is still occurring at the same rate, same concentration gradient, so the same amount of diffusion. But now I've got a larger voltage across the depletion region to turn it back. So uh, holes will diffuse from the P side over into the depletion region, and then the voltage uh, will push it back, and uh, uh, we won't get any current flow. But when I forward bias, bias, the exact opposite happens. As V starts getting larger, it starts approaching the built-in voltage V0. Then V0 minus V, this term here, 
becomes smaller and our depletion width becomes smaller. As that width becomes smaller, it becomes easier for current to flow. So you've got diffusion that is, is go, uh, causing uh, charge, either both electrons and holes, to go into the depletion region. But now the depletion region is much narrower, and it's easier for those charges to keep going. And they won't be turned back by the electric field because the electric field, the potential barrier across that depletion region is now lower. It's easier for charge to, to flow and therefore current will flow. If you forward bias the PN junction, you get current flow. Well, we can look at the math and derive the diode equation. We're not going to do these kinds of derivations here. We're going to spend more of our time on the processing side of how we make devices uh, but still we need to understand a little bit about how the devices work. And the way a diode works is this diode equation. So we, we've got the current going through the diode as a function of the bias voltage applied V and we have a constant I0 that's a function of uh, the doping of the PN and the N uh, region. Um, and then V is compared to KT over Q. Remember KT over Q at room temperature is 25 millivolts. So whenever V starts getting larger than about 25 millivolts, this exponential starts getting big. If it's a positive voltage, E to the QV over KT becomes a very large number and we get this exponential increase in current like this. When Q is negative, very quickly this becomes E to the minus large number when V is much more negative than 25 millivolts and therefore this quickly goes to zero and my diode current becomes minus I naught. So over here in this uh, uh, reverse bias region, we have uh, what's called the leakage current, the um, reverse bias current of the diode. And it's a small number. It's not going to be large for most, most diodes, but uh, we will see some uh, reverse bias current flowing. Right at a voltage of zero, we're going to get zero current. Uh, but when we have a positive bias, we get very large amounts of current. Well, this almost looks like an ideal diode. An, an ideal diode would have zero reverse bias current. And then if I put any positive bias on it, I'll get an infinite amount of current. That is, it's a closed switch. When I positive uh, forward bias it, and when I reverse bias it, it's, it's an open switch. Nothing flows. This behavior, by the way, this curve is called the IV curve, and we use IV curves to describe diodes, uh, even resistors, although it's just a straight line for an IV curve, and transistors in particular. So we'll see IV curves quite a bit in the device science of semiconductors, uh, and this is just our first IV curve. The PN junction also has a capacitance. Any separation of charge produces capacitance. The capacitance of the PN junction is caused by this, this separation of charge on the plus side to the minus side of the depletion region. And we can calculate what, it, uh, what that is very easily. Uh, because this junction looks like two parallel conducting plates. Uh, parallel plate capacitors are well known. If you took an introductory physics class, they probably taught you this somewhere. Uh, if I have a plate uh, that, that, has a, that can store a charge on it, separated some distance W from another plate. Uh, they're in parallel with each other and they each have a, an area A. Then we say the capacitance uh, of the, those two parallel plates is A over W multiplied by the dielectric constant of the material between the two plates. All right, so that's our simple formula for par parallel plate capacitors. Well, we know what W is um, from before, so we simply plug that in and it tells us the capacitance of the PN junction. And this allows us to create or build a capacitor uh, if we want to, but normally the, the issue here is not that we're trying to build a capacitor, it's just that capacitance is built in to the uh, properties of a PN junction. You can see because we've included the possibility of a bias voltage that the capacitance will change depending on how much I bias uh, the PN junction. And that has some interesting uh, properties or capabilities. Uh, let's take a look at an example. 
Example will be uh, uh, one side is doped more heavily than the other. Right? So let's suppose the, the, the P side is the Na concentration is much, much larger than the, the dopant concentration on the N side. So Na is much, much bigger than Nd. We'll call this junction a P plus N junction. Right? We often throw a little plus sign either on the P or the N if that side is heavily doped. Uh, so in this case, heavily doped means it's much more highly doped on the P side than on the N side. Uh, so we'll, we'll often use this, this shorthand notation. We'll call it a P plus N. Uh, if we dope the N side more heavily than the P side, we would call it an N plus, uh, a P N plus junction. So we put the plus side sign as a superscript to whichever side has the heavier, has a heavy doping. Now, if we go back to... Uh, uh, this equation, see what would happen if Na here is much, much bigger than Nd here. So uh, Nd is small, I can neglect it. Uh, the Na's cancel, and we're left with simply Nd, the donor concentration. So uh, Nd shows up here. Now, if uh, this capacitance as a function of voltage were measured, I put it on a piece of equipment, I, I purposely change the voltage and I measure how, the capacitance. This is called measuring the CV curve. It's very, very commonly done. And if I measure the CV curve, and I know things like the area of the device that I made, uh, and I know these constants, um, V0 is small compared to the voltages that I can apply. As a result, by measuring the CV curve, I can very easily extract ND, the dopant concentration uh, of the donor. And this is very common. If, if we want to understand what ND is, we want to measure it, make sure it's the right value, the, the value we wanted it to be, we'll simply form one of these P plus N junctions and measure its capacitance with the CV curve, and that will tell us uh, what the doping concentration is. All right, what have we learned in Lecture 7? Well. Uh, you should be able to, after listening and understanding this lecture, to answer these questions. How does bias affect depletion width? What is a diode? Uh, how does a PN junction act like a diode? Why does a PN junction act like a diode? It's not an ideal diode, but it's pretty close. You should be able to use the diode equation to calculate current for a given uh, bias voltage on the diode, and you should be able to use the CV equation to calculate the cap capacitance of, a, of a, a PN junction, or in some circumstances to be able to work backwards and uh, extract, say, an unknown doping concentration from a measured CV curve. Well, that's our lecture seven. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.